Hello, Pastor Joe here, Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries on the front porch of the house. The weather is amazing. You would never know it's almost the middle of November. And thank you, Father God, for this awesome, beautiful day. And thank you all for tuning in to these messages. It's for all of us. We are a team. And Father God, as I speak, please use me. I I don't I know it sounds like it's a habit, but it's a good habit that I ask you to use me so that the words that I speak come from you, to come from your Holy Spirit that lives in me. Father God, I pray that people that are listening to this message will realize how much you love all of us and how you desire for all of all people to become your children, that you could be their father and that You've given us a way to be forgiven of our sins. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, welcome, everyone. Priscilla, thank you for being here always. You're a big encouragement to me doing these messages. Um, a shout out to everyone. Our friends, our family, and Holy Spirit Ranch team in America, in Atlanta, in Jasper, in the Kenya, in the Philippines, um, on the reservation, everywhere. Thank you, our friends and our family. Thanks for being here. I have a lot of, today's message, I really could just read all the scriptures that say it. So I'm not going to interject too much. This message is for all of us. We have a problem sometimes living in, in the past as far as living in our old sins to forget how clean we are. And then when we commit a new sin or it's a, a repetition of a problem we have, we let the devil start telling us that we're fake Christians or a phony or you see you're not delivered from so-and-so. When we, when we continue, we, we still sin. But we've been forgiven our sins by the blood of Jesus when we give our life to Christ, when we give our life to God. And we're washed white as snow and we're clean and God's forgotten our sins. Let's not remind him. He's forgotten. He's forgotten. He's, he's forgiven and forgotten. That's how God does it. That's how he teaches us. When we have new sins, as we continue to have sin in our life, and we go to God and we ask for forgiveness of those sins and we repent. We ask God to change the way we think and for his Holy Spirit to help us have victory. He again forgets our sins. So don't let the enemy tell you you're not who you are. You're a child of God. If you're not a child of God yet, there's a way God will forgive your sins. The title is today's message, Will God Forgive You? That's kind of a very probing thought, isn't it? Will God forgive you? Now, a lot of believers will go like, oh yeah, you know, sure, of course he forgave me. And they just take it for granted, like, yeah, everything's fine. Well, you still need uh, uh, assistance in your present day sins. You need assistance from God in that matter. And I've met Christians that believe they've had sins that God won't forgive them. And they're Christians. I've met Christians that won't forgive themselves, even though God forgave them. And then everyone who's listening, who's not a child of God, who's not a believer of Christ yet, you might be thinking, you know, will, that's why this title's message, I'm hoping on the internet to pull some people in that aren't Christians. Will God forgive you? You've got people right now that have committed, are committing terrible sins, terrible things in their life, and they actually know it's not right. And it's, it's, Felissa, thanks for being here. Thank you for the encouragement. Um, so we have people now, Christians and non-Christians, but especially non-believers that haven't come to Christ, they're committing, they're doing things in their life now that know are evil. And there's people right now maybe listening that you know you're doing something that's really wrong really wrong. It could be it could be on the job, it could be in your marriage, it could be adultery. It could be so many, it could be 
anger. It could be really evil thoughts that you have. It could be evil actions that you're taking and you feel bad about it and you know it's wrong. Will God forgive you? Will God forgive you for what you're doing right now? Will God forgive you for what you've done in the past? Many of you know my past history. I'm not going to make it about me today, okay? But every, many of you know my past history, and God forgave me of all of those sins, and he forgot about it. So if what's blocking you from being made right with God, if what's blocking you, preventing you from saying yes to Jesus, because you don't believe that God will forgive the sins that you are committing or have committed, or the terrible, terrible things that you've done, if you ask for forgiveness through Jesus, if you ask Jesus to be your Lord, God will instantly forgive you of those sins. And God's Spirit will move into you to give you, that will give you power and victory against those sins in the future. I still have sin in my life, but I have way less than I had. And the various addictions and things that I have are gone. That's available to you. And as believers, we forget. And as many believers haven't forgiven themselves, they've still got baggage, emotional, psychological, and it turns physical, baggage that we're carrying from our past sins, even though we're believers. So, with all that said, by the way, forgiveness starts with Jesus and is 24-7 until the time we arrive in heaven. Think about that. God forgiving us starts with Jesus. He gave us Jesus for our sins. We come to Christ, we could ask for forgiveness of our sins and we're forgiven. And then it's an everyday process. I say 24-7, I don't know about Joel. You ever sin in your dream? Now, whose fault is that? Oh, I'm just dreaming. Well, I've had some dreams that I woke up in the morning and I asked for forgiveness for what was in my mind while I was sleeping. That's why I say forgiveness starts with Jesus and then forgiveness as a Christian is 24-7. 24 hours a day, seven days a week until the time we get to heaven. When we arrive in heaven, there will be no more sin in our life. I'm going to read some scriptures now, okay? Psalms chapter 23, I'm um, Psalms chapter 103, verse 8 through 14. Apostle David, and this is before Christ had taken the form of a child and come to earth. Hey, Michael, hey, how you doing? Thanks for being here. And um, this is, be, you know, before Christ was from the very beginning, but this is before Christ came to earth from heaven, left his place in heaven, and was born into Mary by the Holy Spirit. Okay, but we're talking here, King David, about forgiveness and about the God that we have. Same God then as now. Psalms 103, I'm just going to pick it up in verse 8 through 14. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, slow to get angry, and filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us, nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all of our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. And the east and west never touch. The east and west don't have a east-west pole like the north pole, south pole. That's why King David is saying that about God's forgiveness. He forgives you. He forgets it. It's, it's far gone. It's east from the west. They never touch. There's no beginning and the end to the east and to the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Now, John 3.16, of course, New Testament, 
after Jesus has come to, after Jesus come to the earth. For this is how I'm, not, I'm reading out a uh, NLT New Living Translation, and I kind of like the wording here. For this is how God loved the world. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Will God forgive you? Yes. Anyone who's listening, believe or non-believer, whatever you've done, God will forgive you if you ask. If you ask in your heart. That doesn't mean... That doesn't mean I'm going to go commit that sin right now. No, he doesn't want me to do it. And I could just go say, when I'm, when I'm done, I, I'm, I'm sorry for the sin. But that's not what he's saying. Matthew chapter 1, verse chapter one verse 21. And this is when, um, when the angel was speaking to Joseph that he was going to, that Mary was going to have the Son of God. He goes, quote, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Now, I believe Yeshua is Jesus Hebrew, meaning to rescue. For he will save his people from their sins. Will God forgive you? When the enemy is telling you, you've done something so terrible. And everybody reacts different to the sins in their life. Some people feel more guilty, more convicted than others. Some people consider a little sin that's, you know, not so bad. God doesn't look at it like that. He doesn't look at the um, bank robber, different, let's say, a task cheater. I mean, so we have sin, anger. I mean, just so many things. Sin, if you don't know what sin is, by the way, anyone who's listening, if you're doing something and you feel it's wrong, it's probably a sin. And if you're doing anything against what God says to do, against his word, you know, don't be jealous, don't cover, don't be angry, don't steal, don't kill. If you're doing anything against his word, you are sinning. Now, a lot of young people now, uh, there's so much immorality in our culture and things are so upside down that I believe many young people do not know they're committing sins because they're being told that bad things, bad is good and good is bad. And they're being taught and told from a very young age that, um, that things are that God believes in are wrong. And there's something wrong with you if you follow this. So they're actually being taught. So many people now are living in sin and they, they don't even know it. Um, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians Chapter 5, verse 21, Apostle Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin so that we could be right with God through Christ. Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, Apostle Paul again speaking to the church. Jesus gave his life for our sins, just as God our Father planned in order to rescue us from the evil world in which we live. Now, this is a couple thousand years old. I want to read that again. Jesus gave his life for our sins. So, title title today's message, Will God Forgive You? Well, if the enemy's telling you God won't forgive you, if the enemy's telling you as a Christian you're useless because of the sin that you have, if you're not a Christian and the enemy's telling you, well, well, God won't forgive you for the terrible sins you're committing or have committed, that's all a lie. God wouldn't have given us his only son and made him a sacrifice for our sins. He carried all of our sins on that cross. He was crucified for us, tortured, and died for us. His son that had no sin, he was tempted, but he had no sin. He bared all of our sins and was killed on the, on, the, on the cross for our sins. God made him the perfect, unblemished sacrifice for us. Would God do that? 
Title today is mentioned, will God forgive you? Would God do that and not forgive you? He gave us Jesus as a way if we accept that way, if we seek that way, if we accept Jesus as our Lord, not reject him. God gave us a way. And that's what these scriptures, the whole Bible, there's so much in the Bible. I'm just giving you a little taste of some scriptures here. For, again, Jesus gave his life for our sins, just as God our Father planned in order to rescue us from the evil world in which we live. Are we living? I'm not, by the way, I look at the glass half full, not half thing. So I'm not looking at the world like, yes, we're living in a very evil world. There's total insanity going on. Nation after nation after nation is producing nuclear weapons that, that almost make what happened in Hiroshima in World War II look like a pea shooter compared to what they're making now. What kind of world is that? It's insanity. But you can't, Jesus wants us to see what's going on there. He wants us to see prophecy unfolding, but not to be consumed by my friend Michael, who's watching right now, um, my brother in Christ in the ministry. You know, he always brings up the scripture, we are to keep building and enlarging our territory. Jesus never says, during those times I've told you about, when you see them, don't shut down shop. It's the time to get more in gear because our time's getting shorter to tell people the good news. So it's that strong believers don't look at the world like, ah, oh, yes, we see we're living in an evil world, just like Apostle Paul's talking about. But Jesus came here to rescue us from that evil world. He rescued all of us from this evil world. Um, we're going to go to Romans chapter 3. Verse 22. I know I'm reading a lot of scriptures, but it says a lot better than I can say. God's word says it better. Um, Book of Romans. Again, Apostle Paul speaking to the church. We have made, uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 22. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. There. Okay, will God forgive you? Yes. We are made right. It's not complicated. When you give your life to Christ in a matter of seconds, you know, we, we've seen miracles and blind people see in the lame walk and, and super, you know, miracles, um, manifestations of the Holy Spirit. But the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle is when someone gives their life to Christ and God's Spirit moves into them and they have made right with God. When you're right with God, you're right with God. Even though you've sinned, you still continue sinning, but a lot of sins have been fixed. You still got some problems. You're convicted. You ask God for help. You ask for help change what you think. And he loves you and he forgets that sin. He's not holding it against you. He's not up there with a hammer trying to get you. He's your father and he loves you. And if he gave us Jesus for our sins, he will do anything for us. Yes, God will forgive you of your sins. Believers, non-believers. Absolutely. We are made... Right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. All of us. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right. Freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life. Shedding his blood. The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back. He did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead, including them in what he would do in this present time. God this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just. And he makes sinners listen. And God, who is fair and just, he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. 
Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law. It is based on faith. So we are made right with God through faith, not by obeying the law. You know, when God gave me this last night, I was going to just kind of talk from my heart a lot. And then he just, sometimes I do that, but he, he, he just gave me scriptures and said, this just, just make the case with these scriptures. I'm going to read one more, Ephesians chapter, um, chapter 2. Chapter, I'm sorry, chapter... Chapter 1, verse 3. It's not going to be my last scripture. All praise to God, the Father of our... Oh, by the way, this is Apostle Paul speaking to the Church of Ephesus. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. If you're not a believer, really just listen to this. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. It gave God, gives God great pleasure to welcome imperfect, sinful people into his family through Jesus Christ, through forgiveness through Jesus Christ. It gives him pleasure. Not pleasure in our sin, but pleasure in showing us a way to clean up our act that we're not capable of doing on our own. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure so we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. And that's anyone that's asked Jesus to be their Lord. That's every single one of us. No matter who we are, what age we are, what color we are, what race we are, what income level we are, what our sins are. Every single one of them that has asked Jesus to be our Lord and Savior belongs to God. We've been forgiven. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. A lot of scripture, so powerful. Simple message today. I know when God gave me this message last night, I'm going, well, how many messages have I done on forgiveness? We're forgiving others, God forgiving us, the blood of Jesus, Christianity is a cornerstone of the faith, et cetera, et cetera. God will, you know, Lord's Prayer, you know, we forgive others as God forgives us, you know. It's, it just goes throughout this whole book. But today was, will God forgive you? Yes, he will, if you seek it. Three things. Forgive and forget. That's what God does. He, he forgives and forgets. Do we forgive and forget? Now, it feels really good when you hear this message and believe it because it's God's word and you really realize when you come into the kingdom, he forgives you for the junk and as a believer, he's forgiven you of your junk and you have present sins. When you go to him, he forgives you of that. He forgets as far as the east from the west. That feels good for us when we really grasp what's going on. God forgives and he forgets. Do we forgive and forget as God does to us? No. Sometimes we do, but often we don't. And if you're talking about something that someone did to you in the past and you're doing it in a conversation, that's full forgiveness. Okay, that's kind of borderline. But so often we say we forgive somebody, but we're still talking about it six months later, two years later. We're still talking about what they did. That's not forgetting, is it? So... God forgives and forgets. God forgives and forgets us for us. Do we forgive and forget others? 
The third point is, I've mentioned this so many times, and this is so prevalent. Once people do come in to Christianity, do become child, children of God, once they do, they hold on to this baggage, and they hold on to it, and they hold on to it, and they haven't forgiven themselves of their sins, bad things, they still feel guilty. It affects the baggage um, of people that sinned against them and, and their own sins. The carrying the stuff around and affects them spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Causes physical harm to them. And one reason for that is because if God's forgiven you and you will forgive yourself, that's not like, a, it's not like some kind of great example of humility. No, it's not. It's not, it's not well. It's what the devil wants. It's sickness. He's attacking you. He's not letting you receive God's forgiveness. God forget, well, you, you receive it, but you're not acknowledging it. And you're also, how can you be right with God, be made right with God, and be in alignment with God when you're doubting him and calling him a liar? If you're doubting him for giving you your sins, what are, how, much in, how much in here are you going to doubt? When God forgives you of your sins, don't, don't doubt God or call him a liar for whatever. If God forgave you of your sins and you don't, think about that. What's, think about what's wrong with that. God's forgiven you of your sins. He gave Jesus. Look what he did with Jesus. He let, look, look how he gave us Jesus as a sacrifice for our sins. And then when you come to Christ, he forgives your sins. You're going to doubt him? Huh. You're not going to ever function right in your walk with God like that. Things just aren't going to work right. So you need to get that off. I know I'm talking to somebody here. You need to get rid of that. God forgave you. He forgot as far as he's from the West. You're clean, buried, whatever you did is gone and forgotten. Do not let the enemy hold that against you. So three things. God forgives and forgets. We need to forgive others and forget. And we need to forgive ourselves forget and I love you all will God forgive you yeah <laughs> yeah and I don't mean it's frivolously yes yes God will forgive you it's all about forgiveness he loves us and if we love other people and we love Jesus we'll obey Christ and we'll forgive and forget like we're taught and it's how much God loves us that's why John 3 16 for God so loved the world gave us Jesus. To someone right now, I know God's revealing this to me, to someone right now, right on the edge. I don't even know if, I think they're actually a believer. Some woman, some people, they're right on the edge of having victory against the evil in their life that they've been part of. Whether it was put on them or they did it, there's this evil in their life. And the forgiveness needs to happen. And they need to forgive others and themselves. Especially themselves. For whatever reason. God forgave you already. Honor God. Honor what God did for us, for you, for giving you Jesus. Honor God's decisions. Honor his love and forgiveness and forgive yourself. You can be free now. The devil has no power over you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Anyone who's listening to this message, anyone who's listening to this message now, will God forgive you? Yes, he will. But you need to ask for it. The way to receive his forgiveness is through believing in Jesus Christ as his son, believing in Jesus Christ that he died for our sins, for your sins, just a little bit. Your, your faith gets stronger by seeing and by hearing. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and that God rose him from the dead three days later, defeating death. And you will be saved. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you all for being here. And check us out on Holy Spirit Ranch Ministries.org. And 
Our, uh, Arthur is keeping our website updated. He'll tell you what's going on about the trip we just did, a reservation, future. Um, YouTube, subscribe, Instagram, Facebook. I love you all. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Bye.